My name is Richard Kiplagat. I'm the team leader of uh, car number 29, which is the very first electronic or EV vehicle that has ever competed in the Rhino Charge. I'm really excited. My name is Nick Foley. Uh, this is my company, Foley's East Africa. Um, I've been in Kenya for 12 years now, and uh, we have built the EV Explorer vehicle, uh, which will be the first electric vehicle entering the Rhino Charge in 2025. It's really important to protect the water towers. And so we've been involved for more than 10 years in raising money for conservation. And that's something that we're passionate about and that we want to continue doing. We asked ourselves, as we are doing Rhino Charge, and as we're trying to help conserve um, our, our, our biodiversity and environment, um, shouldn't we be doing that in a more sustainable manner? And uh, we thought, hey man, that would be a cool thing to do. So we decided to give ourselves the challenge of designing and building and entering and competing uh, a locally uh, built car that has zero emissions. So I have a team of fabricators, um, all Kenyan, and it's a completely Kenyan built vehicle. I must say, I haven't physically done it. I've been on the design team, but my employees um, have, have built this. Um, so I'm very proud of them and what has come out of it. We have a, an electric motor peaking at 230 kilowatts. We have um, the capacity to hold two battery packs. Each battery pack is 62 kilowatt hours. Um, they weigh in at about 480 kgs each. Um, so we've had to factor that in with the build. Um, once we enter charge day, uh, we will be loaded up with two battery packs. There, that's 114 kilowatt hours of, of battery power, and that should get us through the day. If it doesn't, our support vehicle will be carrying a, a third battery. So we're running a 12 volt and a 24 volt system. Uh, 24 volt for the winches, 12 volt for the dashboard, and then our battery packs are running at 350 volts. Electric steering, powering a hydraulic ram. I've researched it a lot, I can't find anyone else that's done it before. Success would be finishing. I think to finish in an EV in its first year would, would be a, a, a massive success. There's a lot of hype around the vehicle. We want to do more than just start, we want to finish. This is not going to be the last one, it's the first one, but we want to continue to improve the vehicle. Um, we want to see what we learn from, from that process. Secondly, we want to raise awareness and we want to inspire people to try and do the same and to try and enter a zero emissions vehicle. Um, and we also want to inspire young Kenyan engineers that this can be done in Kenya by Kenyans. Uh, we want to be able to encourage people to say, you know what, you can manufacture a zero emissions vehicle in Kenya. It is possible. Um, I think it's a question of uh, time that there will be more adoption of electronic vehicles and uh, zero emissions vehicles in Kenya. There's a lot of EV hype going on around the world. It goes up and down. Um, Kenya is ready for it. We live on the equator. We have plenty of sunshine. Um, we need to push for EVs. I think it's a mixture of excitement and nerves. We know that, uh, we know that this is going to be challenging. We know it's new. Um, but we know that we're doing something that's, that's cool and interesting. And, uh, and however it turns out, um, we will have been the first to do something. So hopefully all will go well. We have a lot to do. We would like to get some testing done. Um, I have confidence we'll get it done. The Rhino Charge is an off-road event and the objective of the Rhino Charge is, uh, as a competition is to uh, get through 12 checkpoints within 12 hours using the least amount of distance. Now, what that means is that you have to hit all these checkpoints uh, using as straight a line as possible and when you are in the middle of nowhere and there are no roads, that, that becomes very, very challenging. In a team, you have a driver, you have a navigator, and you have four runners, and I'll be one of, one of the four runners. Now, in order to be a good runner, you need to have 
an understanding of an ability to read the terrain, an ability to understand what the car can do, an ability to communicate very clearly with the driver what the driver needs to do. It's a question of conditioning. It's like anything you need to, you need to take time to prepare yourself physically, to prepare yourself mentally. We will carry a lot of water with ourselves, um, so we'll be hydrating during the course of the day. We will have a break at each checkpoint where we'll take on nutrition and we'll take on some water. Essentially, you will need to wear clothes that, are, that do two things. Number one, they protect you from the weather, but number two, very importantly, they protect you from the bush because we are going where there are no roads and often it's purely through bush. I think men, as a general, are pretty simple. We, we seek thrills and uh, the Rhino Charge allows us to have that in a controlled environment. The, the first reason why we do this is because we love cars, we love motorsports. But more importantly, and the thing that is most uh, precious to me, is the camaraderie and the, and the feeling that we get from being a team, working together to overcome challenges, and adversity, to find solutions on the go, to deal with pressure, but also to be in nature. The charge for me is a big, big part of the year. Um, we enter quite a few vehicles in. Um, I enjoy it because there's a lot of thrill that comes with it. You don't know where you're going, you don't know what to expect. We've had uh, incidences where we've been chased by bees. We've had uh, situations where one of us was caught by thorns and he, with the car moved forward and he was left hanging in a tree. Um, we have left the, ch the charge car actually suspended, coming down a cliff, suspended on a, on a tree for, for a couple of days before we could retrieve it. Um, we have rolled a couple of times also, but thank thankfully we have, none of us have ever been, uh, been hurt. So I've competed about five times um, over the last six years. Um, I love the the noise of all the vehicles driving around. However, this one is going to be quiet. So it will bring quite a unique experience. So we're very grateful to Safaricom for um, their contribution and their support for this effort. Um, we know that Safaricom has a commitment to sustainability and, uh, and this is a great partnership that we have uh, together. And we hope that this is a, a, an ongoing partnership as I mentioned, this project is, is not just for this year, it will, it will continue. Um, but uh, Asante Sana, Safari Club.